It's been 23 years since I had an abortion and that day is still very much um, clear and etched into my memory. When we first found out that um, was pregnant, it was an initial kind of shock and um, at first kind of celebrated and then the next day it's like the reality of it starting to sink in, how it will change our relationship and how it will change the things that we were doing. Upon talking to some family, they said, you need to get rid of it. You're not going to get ahead in life financially. It's not the right way to start a relationship. We made this appointment. We, we went and saw this, this doctor, who is actually uh, was a family doctor. And you expect the doctor to, well, they're educated, they know it all. And so the advice they give, you, you kind of accept. And really when I went and gave my fears that I was scared of repeating the past, that um, Peter would leave, the baby be born without a father, I didn't know my father. Basically, they did agree with what I said and said that you're young and this is no problem, I'll book you in as soon as possible and then that'd be it. They didn't offer any other options that were available and really I didn't know where else to look. I was 20, you know, going on 21. He just made the appointment and we went along. We thought, oh, maybe this is easy, saying that it's a fetus, it's just a blob. So I saw a counsellor, the, the father, the male wasn't involved, he, he stayed out of it. And this counsellor basically agreed with all my fears of my own um, dysfunctional background. She basically said, you're doing the right thing. I'll hold your hand through the procedure. And I thought, well, during the procedure, yes, she was there. But after that day, I'd never heard anything. And they're not there for the whole journey. It was there and then and then I was on my own. And this woman was going over the, the actual procedure. And um, the interesting fact was, this woman was about eight months pregnant at the time and I still can't get that image out of my mind. How could she do what she's doing? How could she do what yeah. she's doing, you know? Mm. But at the same time, because she was eight months pregnant, I thought maybe it isn't so bad. You know, I'm, I'm 10, between 10 to 12 weeks. Deep down inside of you, you know that it's an unnatural thing to do. I just kind of went with the flow, really. And it was like, when I went through, you just felt like another number. And it, it like took of all of probably 10 minutes, I was awake through the whole thing and felt the, the suction and I just felt my life being sucked away. And it's, it's like that, 10 minutes has changed my life forever. Because I had this deep secret within me, I didn't want to expose myself too much, so I went a bit within myself, and at times I didn't want to marry Peter. It was kind of partly a, a love-hate relationship and um, it, but then at the same time I thought well no one else is going to want me because of what I've done and my family background and so it's quite a rocky start to a marriage. It was actually probably one of the hardest periods of our, of our relationship for three months we we started not getting along with each other really and uh, I wondered why you changed from being somebody that was happy and, and uh, outgoing to sort of why, why are you letting it carry on affecting you, sort of that's something that we've done and we've moved on from. 
On top of that, I had a friend come back from the UK and she was pregnant, unmarried, and she chose to keep her baby. And her baby was born in April, which my baby, our baby, would have been born. But I found it really hard seeing her go through the pregnancy and then having the baby. But when we decided to have a, a child and fell pregnant, I, um, we were really excited. I thought, oh, this baby's going to solve it. It's going to uh, make things right. But then as we went further along and we went for an ultrasound uh, and I saw this baby on the ultrasound and I thought it just brought it all home again, the reality of what we had done. And I realised that this baby can't replace that other baby, that each baby is unique. And so through that pregnancy, I also grieved what I had done and the other baby had lost. And I, was, I also felt that I didn't really deserve to have any more children um, because of that, that choice that I had made. actually heard on the radio pregnancy counselling and it was the first time I'd heard about it and they spoke something about post-abortion healing and I thought I need to ring them, I need help and so during my pregnancy I rang them and I talked to them and, and kind of I, I said am I crazy and when they went through all the post-abortion syndrome of anxiety, low self-worth I had no confidence in myself. So I realised that, no, I'm not crazy and I'm not alone, that other people have gone through this because of this experience. And I just felt by talking with her and, um, and, and for me actually naming the baby, I named the baby Hope, in the sense hope for the future, hope that I can be a good mum, a good wife, make something of my life. And through that, I, I kind of, once I named the baby, I, I wrote a letter asking this baby hope for forgiveness of what I'd done because I couldn't change what had been done. A friend gave us a, a, a plaque saying hope and to have that by the door at home and to have discussed it with our kids that um, uh, it is part of our journey and part of our lives and um, part of our family. There is no grave to visit. There's no place to lay flowers or any thought of remembering it. And I really felt that as I shared and acknowledged what I had done, that it was one step on my journey of healing. That often when you share with someone a deep hurt or a deep secret, it just seems to help lift the load. And for me, I felt a load lift off my shoulders and it was the start of my kind of journey. We had a friend of ours sort of say that, talking about abortion, just as a part of a conversation we are having one time, how she said, well, she had four kids and she said, well, just take a, one of the <clears throat> knives out of the bread drawer and, and pick which kid you want to kill off in the bedroom. and. Uh, she said it's just like that for abortion and that really struck home to me the, 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 the truth of the matter that you're just taking away that life and that that child doesn't have a, a choice or a chance in the decision and yes it's it's having an effect on our life having a child but what sort of effect is it having on the child that you're you're saying hey I don't want your life there um, you don't get a chance um, because that's a the creation has started and, and that person is, is, is on the journey and uh, an abortion is saying, hey, you, you don't get a shot at life. How fair is that?
So after watching the paper clips project kind of I started thinking how could we do something to bring awareness to abortion. Through that that I thought the buttons project we could collect buttons because each button can be unique in itself and they're long lasting whereas fabric um, fades and rips and tears and but everyone can get hold of a button and so by people sending in their button and part of their story that we too could create an amazing memorial of buttons and in an appropriate place of remembrance, a safe place to visit and a memorial book that it will show that each button represents a life that has been taken, that what happened mattered, that it's a way to remember, to, to grieve and, and to love and start that journey of healing. And so we developed the website for the Buttons Project and decided to put my story on there. Even though it was a little bit hard putting it out there for everyone to see, I really felt that it was important to sometimes one person sharing their story just enables someone else the freedom and the choice to do the same. Some of them have been stories anonymous and that's okay, that it's, it's just a step for them sharing something. Some have given their name, some have had abortions 58 years ago saying thanks for this opportunity to remember the babies that were lost. I pray that they will forgive me or for the baby that was discarded in a backstreet abortion, please forgive me. So life is, is precious and uh and we, we really have grieved through that process and, um, and just don't want other people to take that decision lightly because we live in a throwaway world that people think um, simple and instant decisions um, don't come without uh, consequences, but they do. And, uh, and we want people to think through those effects. Uh, in New Zealand, 10 teenagers a day are making this decision. And as teenagers, are they thinking about um, the effects it's going to have on the rest of their life. Um, not if I know myself at that age or, or our teenagers, it's uh, the decision is taken lightly and the consequences um, follow. For those that do find themselves in unclean pregnancy, there is a lot of info out there and there is options, pregnancy counselling. Do some research, look on the internet, look at all your options, make that informed decision. Through abortion, I felt that I didn't have the right to grieve, that I made that choice and I've just got to get on with it. And, and so a lot of it was suppressed and it's giving the freedom that it is okay to grieve, that if you feel to grieve, it is right. I guess that's why I wanted to share my story, to enable them to open up, to realise that they're not alone talk to someone you trust. You don't need to tell the world, but just share it. And already by sharing, often a problem shared is a problem halved.